start this presentation, let's go back in time a little bit. Well, it still exists, but if we look here, we can see that in a piloted aircraft, many pilots still have to use something known as an inertial navigation system. And, well, the interface, that's mostly what I want to emphasize here at the moment, the interface is kind of clunky in some of those airplanes. All these dials to push and buttons to push and, you know, the net result is this. This unit will eventually tell the pilot where they are, where they're going, their speed, their heading. It can also measure things like their attitude and also their roll and yaw and pitch. So this device is incredibly important. And guess what? It still is in the UAV world. However, fortunately, as time has gone on, things have become smaller and smaller and more compact, and in many cases, easier to use. We're going to study most intensely in this presentation the inertial measurement unit. Now, this here is actually one form of an IMU. And what it is is it's a series of accelerometers and gyros that can tell our aircraft what it is doing in terms of pitch, roll, yaw, acceleration, and as well, position. Now, once we put the position information alongside an IMU, we end up with the inertial navigation system of our UAVs. So we'll study this and we'll figure out how it all works together as we continue on here. So when you're flying, it is, of course, very important that your RPA knows at all times its position, attitude, and velocity. From there, as that RPA changes its position, it's going to undergo changes in terms of velocity and, as well, quite often, maybe its attitude. So our UAV needs to know how these are changing and by how much. In order to do this, our UAVs make use of an inertial measurement unit, an IMU, as it is usually shorthanded. So what does an IMU consist of? Well, first of all, think about this, and remember this for the exam. This is quite important. Our UAV is capable of speeding up or slowing down, right? This is known as acceleration. Think back to high school physics. However, now that we're operating in three dimensions, acceleration can happen in any direction. Acceleration can happen in an up or down sense. It can also accelerate in the terms of, say, a right or left sense. But then again, it can also accelerate in the sense of forwards or backwards, right? So we've got up, we've got down, but then we also have right, and we have left, but then we also have forward towards the cameras and backwards away from the cameras. So our UAVs can accelerate in three different dimensions. Now, measuring these changes in velocity is the job of an accelerometer. This is the important part for the exams. It is important to remember that accelerometers will measure the linear changes in your aircraft's flight path. All right, so accelerometers measure movements that are linear. Now, our UAVs are also capable of changing their attitude, right? If we take our little model aircraft here, well, we can have changes in pitch. So up and down sense in terms of the aircraft's nose. But then we can also have changes in roll. So, of course, roll is where we bank our aircraft in the end. Now, finally, we could also have changes in terms of yaw. So the aircraft kind of skidding, in a sense, around its up and down axis. So measuring the changes in angles. Notice, of course, if I've got my aircraft straight and level, and now it pitches up, well, I've now had an angular change. I've rotated around an axis. So measuring these changes in the angles is the job of the gyroscope. And guess what? This phrase here, the one that I just stated, 
That's the important one to remember for the exam. A gyroscope's job is to measure the angular changes of our aircraft.